We have all green light. The rocket is armed. Minus 15 seconds. The San Marco Equatorial Mobile Range is located in Enguana Bay, formerly Formosa Bay, of the Indian Ocean, off the east coast of Kenya, Africa. The range was conceived by the Italian Centro Ricerche Aerospaziale and developed under a cooperative project with the United States National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The objective was to establish a seaborne launch facility utilizing the NASA Scout Launch Vehicle to place satellites in orbits about the equator. The launch complex consists of two floatable platforms. The San Marco platform serves as the launching platform necessary for vehicle assembly and testing. The Santa Rita platform serves as the focal point of range operations. Logistic support is provided from a base camp located on the mainland nearby. The Scout launch vehicle is a four-stage solid propellant vehicle capable of orbit, probe, and re-entry Earth missions with demonstrated high reliability. The Scout vehicle is composed of solid propellant rocket motors, structural transition sections, and a heat shield. The basic vehicle has a length of approximately 73 feet and a launch weight of 45,000 pounds. The San Marco Equatorial Range is accessible by air or sea from all parts of the world. However, its unique location places special emphasis on logistics planning. The solid propellant rocket motors, pyrotechnics, and other hazardous material are shipped by sea from the United States to the range. The rocket motors are shipped in their shipping containers inside three trailer vans. The trailer vans are rotable vans with detachable running gear. These vans are equipped with air conditioning units to provide a controlled environment inside the vans. Smaller explosive items and other hazardous material that do not require environmental control are boxed and palletized for open deck shipment. Sailing time between the United States and the San Marco Range is normally 26 days. Several methods for offloading cargo at the range are employed which provide a year-round capability that is consistent with safe practices. Normally, the ship stands off from the range platform and the cargo is positioned on deck. The mobile crane on the platform transfers the cargo to the platform. When the rocket motors have been removed from the shipping containers, both the vans and empty containers are returned to the ship. The offloading operation requires six to eight hours. The scout vehicle, the spacecraft, and other non-hazardous material are shipped by air to Nairobi, Kenya, Africa. Nairobi is an international air center with frequent flights making connections with practically any place in the world and is the port of entry for air shipments arriving in Kenya. This modern airport can serve any existing aircraft and has cargo offloading equipment with a capacity of six tons. 
Nairobi is the capital city of Kenya and the commercial heart of East Africa. The city is about 320 miles inland from the Indian Ocean, about 87 miles south of the equator, and 5,000 feet above sea level. The vehicle and spacecraft shipping containers are transferred from the aircraft to trucks for the 400-mile trip to base camp. Trucking is required due to aircraft landing weight restrictions and limitations of cargo handling equipment at Mombasa and Malindi. The most direct overland route to base camp is by the way of Mombasa and Malindi. Malindi is located on the coast, approximately 70 miles north of Mombasa. Air carrier service is available at Malindi, connecting with Mombasa and Nairobi. Malindi is primarily a tourist town and has attractive resort hotels. During operations at the range, a large number of personnel stay in Malindi and commute the 20 miles to base camp. The road from Malindi to base camp is an all-weather road. Base camp is the primary logistic support area for the platforms. The campsite, covering about two acres, include living quarters, dining room, dispensary, laundry, and communications. Base camp is the primary staging area for personnel to and from the platforms. Two 50-foot motorboats provide daily transportation for personnel and material between base camp and the platforms, each trip requiring about 25 minutes. The majority of personnel return to base camp at the end of each working day, leaving only a standby crew on the platform. Located in Nguana Bay, approximately three miles offshore from base camp, are the Santa Rita platform and the San Marco platform. The platforms, approximately 500 meters apart, are electrically connected by underwater cables and make up the launch complex. The facilities of the San Marco range provide the support services required to prepare, check, launch, track, acquire data from, and evaluate scout vehicle launch spacecraft experimental tests. The San Marco platform serves as the launching platform and contains the launcher and ground support equipment necessary for vehicle assembly, checkout, and launch. Vehicle assembly and checkout is performed inside the launcher shelter on a trailer-type transporter. During vehicle assembly, each stage is built up separately by joining transition sections with live rocket motors. The vehicle base section is joined with the Algol first stage motor. The base section has fins and movable vanes that control the attitude of Scout during the initial launch phase. The Algol motor provides a liftoff thrust in excess of 100,000 pounds. The second stage motor, Castor 2, develops 62,000 pounds of thrust. Build-up of the third stage is performed in the motor storage building. The third stage transition section is joined with the Antares motor. This motor develops 30,000 pounds of thrust. The fourth stage transition section is then joined with the Antares motor and the completed assembly is transferred to the transporter.
The second stage is mated with the first, the third stage with the second, and finally the fourth stage motor, called alto stage pair, is mated to complete the motor stack. Interstage electrical connections can now be made and tunnel covers and access doors installed to complete the vehicle assembly. Ground support equipment is verified and vehicle systems checked prior to mating scout with the launcher. Spacecraft pre-installation checks are performed in an environmentally controlled room. Should the spacecraft require it, this room is capable of meeting the requirements of a clean room. The spacecraft is moved to the launcher shelter to be mated with Scout. Following the completion of the spacecraft installation, the heat shield is installed and a final inspection is made to ready Scout for its dress rehearsal prior to launch. During dress rehearsals and countdown, the launcher shelter and other ground support equipment are moved to the downrange end of the platform. The dress rehearsal simulates an actual launch countdown to verify that equipment, personnel, and procedures can perform the task necessary to countdown and launch scout. During the countdown, the launcher is raised and rotated until the vehicle reaches the launch position. Local traffic between the San Marco platform and the Santa Rita platform is by rubber boat. The boat trip between platforms requires approximately five minutes. Access to the platform is accomplished by sling and hoist, lifting motorboat and crew aboard. Transfer of personnel between the 50-foot motorboats and the platforms is by a lifting device called a Billy Pew net. The Santa Rita platform serves as a combined range control, blockhouse, and logistics facility. The range control center is located in a compartment below deck. Its function is to provide range control and coordination during countdown and launch. Vehicle launch control is conducted from the blockhouse on the main deck. The blockhouse consists of two trailer vans joined along one side. Electrical power for the platform is provided by motor generators on an auxiliary platform off the stern of the Santa Rita. The telemetry system is VHF, PAM, FM, FM with auto tracking antenna. The station is housed in a trailer van on the main deck. The system will be converted to S-band in 1973. The communication systems operating at the range include both internal and external communication networks. A troposcatter system provides teletype and direct dial telephone service to Malindi, Mombasa, or through international operators to anywhere in the world. Data for range safety and flight analyses are provided by two radar systems located on the large auxiliary platform close off the stern of the Santa Rita. Both systems are mobile type, housed in trailer vans, and are designed to acquire and automatically track in range, elevation, and azimuth. Data from the systems are displayed in the vans and in the range control center. The range provides meteorological facilities to support launch operations. A calibration laboratory is located on the Santa Rita platform in a compartment below deck. The laboratory provides a single source of calibration for all test and measuring instruments at the range. Food is prepared and served on both platforms and at base camp. On the Santa Rita platform, the dining area comprises the second deck. A food storage compartment is on the first deck. A small dining area and kitchen are located on the San Marco platform. Both platforms and base camp 
are equipped with first aid stations and medics to handle routine and emergency cases. The mobile Italian telemetry station is located at base camp. This station provides a means for data acquisition and satellite control. It may be integrated into the NASA satellite tracking and data acquisition network. The range is operated by the Cencio Ricciarche Aerospaziale. The range is manned by Italian engineers and technicians having broad technical backgrounds and training to form an operational organization and launch team under the direction of Professor Luigi Broglio, director of the CRA. Release the sequencer now. We have all green light. The San Marco Equatorial Range is a fully equipped range for the conduct of a peaceful scientific investigation of space and the upper atmosphere. The range is available for use by any nation or organization interested in conducting space research and exploration. It is the role for which the San Marco Equatorial Range was conceived. It is the role the San Marco Equatorial Range accepts. It is the role which the San Marco Equatorial Range has achieved.